I love Taylor Sheridan. He's 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 a good guy. He's funny. And he's a real cowboy. He's a real cowboy, but he's he, he trusts he hires good actors. Mm -hmm. There's all good actors on Yellowstone. We've all been doing it a long time. I'm probably the oldest one in of the principals and the recurring people. Uh, and they, they treat me with respect I've never seen before, probably because of my age. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Ward. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. And we've got a special episode for you today because there's a hit show that I know most of you are watching. It's called Yellowstone. And we have Felix Long from that. You know him, maybe, as Wind from the High Chaparral. I'm talking about Rudy Ramos. Come on in, Rudy. <laughs> Nice to see you. Good to be seen, believe me. And we're on a stage, and I know you do a lot of stage work, too. You did a one-man show of Geronimo that was a big hit and got all kinds of uh, acclaim for that. Yeah, well, I traveled, uh, I've traveled around the country for six years uh, doing Geronimo. Wherever I was invited, that's where I would go. And uh, I just wanted to share with, with people that didn't know his side of the story. Mm -hmm. And I think, that, that I think that we did that. Even though my people and I are afraid of what might happen to us, I know it is the right thing to do. For me, for my people. It changing a lot since you started in High Chaparral as wind, the, the respect that people have and wanting to know the history of Native Americans? Yes, yes. Uh, People in general do mm -hmm. want to. Uh, I, I see um, in the in the movie and television business, there's progress. It's a real slow well, progress. And, well, it's kind of flopped on Yellowstone mm -hmm. because the real badass guys are all the white uh, Kevin Costner and his whole family, yeah. and uh, you know Gil Birmingham and and Mo. Uh, Mo brings plenty. Mo knows plenty is you know they're respected and and you, my you, guy my guy uh, felix oh. long felix long is like the the elder of the reservation mm -hmm. he's the one that everybody comes to to vent even kevin's character mm -hmm. john dutton there's a very one of my my first scene in in episode one of season one kevin and i were sitting on the back of a pickup and he was venting to me about all this craziness going on and felix is a wise man mm -hmm. you know he was uh, he was not a prisoner of war, but he was taken off the reservation. And this is, this is, it wasn't in the script. I had to kind of like make up my own past, but uh, part of Geronimo, you know, native boys were taken off the reservation and sent to Carlisle, Pennsylvania to learn how to be white men. Hmm. So Felix was a, a victim of that. Taylor Sheridan has crafted a, a wonderful He's amazing. Uh, saga that, uh, you know, it's nice going back to the 1883, and now we're going to have the middle years, too, uh, to see the changes that you're, you're talking about. Yeah. Did you audition for that part? How did they select you? Yeah, I auditioned just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was at a time when I had been on the road with my Geronimo show, so I was... I was pretty sharp because I kept my chops up while you know I wasn't doing film. I hadn't done any film in four or five years. Can't even remember, and it, and it wasn't an issue with me. I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. I, I studied with Charlie Deerkop over there, at, you know, with same same acting coach when, when he was happening, and I was just a young actor and didn't know anything about anything. He used to give me a ride home on his motorcycle because uh, <laughs> I didn't have a car. But that's when I started studying. But I was just real sharp. I was real confident. I, I, I looked at that material. There were two, two scenes to do. I had never read material mm -hmm. with that kind of depth uh, for a native man. And I thought, wow, this is good stuff. So I, I got it ready. I went, auditioned. Uh, they called right away. They, being the powers that be, said they wanted to see me again the next week. So I went in the next week. and. You know, that's all I did for the next week. So I just lived with that, with those sides. And when I went in, uh, there was a lot of people 
in that office. Not just many, but more than, you know, when there's about 20 people in an office, you know it's an important role. All the new actors <laughs> know that. So uh, I, just, I just did my reading like, like I wanted to do it, not what I thought they wanted. I thought that Wes Studi or uh, Graham Greene, both Academy Award nominees, would get this part because it's that good. Mm -hmm. But whenever I finished my last word, I heard somebody say, yep, that's it. And I looked around, kind of trying to be cool about it, and <laughs> couldn't see who said it. So I got up and I left, and on my way home, my, uh, oh no, on the inner office, the girl was watching a screen, and I said, did you see that, it, that reading I just did? And she said, no, I'm watching somebody's uh, tape that they sent in. I, went, oh. I said, well, I heard somebody say something in there, and she said, oh, that was Taylor. <laughs> I said, Taylor Sheridan? She said, I didn't see him in there, and she said, he's not. He's in Utah. He was watching it from Skype, and he said, he watched that reading, and he said, yep, that's it. So on my way home, my agent called me and said, okay, they want to book you for the first two shows. That's the only time I've ever signed a contract, and two shows have turned into 12 shows. One season has turned into five. It's just my life. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's fa fantastic, and, and what a, a monster hit that oh, is. Yeah. It's changed so much, too, yeah, it, it, of it, the it, business. And Taylor, he's yeah. the guy right now. He is hands-on on everything. Does he show up, or is he on Skype when you guys are shooting? Oh, no, he's there. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, no, he, he, he wrote and directed every episode of, of season one, mm -hmm. and then he wrote most of the episodes and, and directed most of the uh, episodes in season two, in season three, he was off directing, directing a, a film uh, with Angelina Jolie, and they had different directors come in there, but a couple of them were people that were on the camera in season one. And, you know, it just, it's just the flow. It's a company. Um, I love working with, I love Taylor Sheridan. He's, he's, he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. He's funny. And he's a real cowboy. He's a real cowboy, but he's, he, he, trusts, he hires good actors. Mm -hmm. There's all good actors on Yellowstone. We've all been doing it a long time. I'm probably the oldest one in, of the principals and the recurring people, uh, and they, they treat me with respect I've never seen before, probably because of my age. But <laughs> I, Whatever, I, it I, works. I, it's I, nice. I'll, I'll take it. And, and I, I, I got to tell you a quick story about I I was doing a scene, and... Taylor really trusts his actors. So I said, Taylor, and he said, wait, something's wrong. What, what, what is it? And I said, well, there, there's, I don't know, something, it's, there's a gap there. And it, don't you think it needs to be filled? And he said, yeah. And he walked away. I said, well, what do you want me to say? And he said, he turned around and looked at me. He said, say what you want. It was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Taylor. I love working with that guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the pressure that you felt in that big room is it's whittling down for you to get this part. What was the pressure like for High Chaparral, which was your first role, and you, the same thing happened where it's like a one-off, and they say, oh, no, let's bring him back a few more times. High Chaparral, I auditioned once, and I did, that was uh, for Milt Hammerman, the casting director, in the morning. And then in the, he asked me that morning, can you come back this afternoon and, and do this again? And I said, sure. So, and I had never worked. I was still training. I had only been training for a couple of years uh, in a workshop with Charlie. And I went back and, and uh, I, there was two people in the room. There was Mr. Dortort, David Dortort, who created High Shop Rail and Bonanza, and uh, Jim Schmier, who was the producer of uh, that season of High Chaparral, and we, we did that reading again, and I, I wasn't real crazy about that reading, and I got to the door, and I said, had my hand on the knob, but on the, on the doorknob, and I turned around, and I said, could we do that again? And they said, Mr. Dortrout went, yeah, you could do that again. I said, okay, and they said, can we switch the parts? And because Milt Hammerman was the casting director, but he was an actor at one point, too. And it was from uh, Hat Full of Rain. And many times in you know, Charlie and our workshop, I, I see people do scenes. For, so anyway, I played the other part. Mm -hmm. And that brought something out in me that the part that, that I read that day was something that Mr. Dortort was looking for. And he said, as soon as we finished, he, he was like, 
how quick are you ready to go to Tucson, Arizona? I said, does this mean I have the part? And he said, yes, it does. That was on a Friday, and on Wednesday, I was shooting my first episode of Chaparral. Uh, and I had never worked before. I had never been on a movie well, set. Well, let me ask you then, uh, because that show, this was the fourth season where your character comes in, so it was already like a family affair with all these people. Did you feel intimidated at, it, at all? You know, I was too young, too inexperienced uh, to even think that way. I'm not really an insecure person anyway. I, 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 I knew what I was there to do, and it was like bring those words to life with that guy. That was my training. What were those guys like, Henry Darrow and Mark Slade and, and, and Cameron Mitchell? Mark wasn't in that season. He had gone on to other things. You were uh, his replacement. No. <laughs> no, 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 I was not. Mark Slade played... Blue. Blue Boy. I played a half-breed Indian, mm -hmm. Wind. Now, I'm it, facetious. It, it, it's like... Uh, oh, your character oh, no, as but, a but person, the, they needed somebody to carry no, a that, different... No, that character was in there before he didn't sign his contract mm -hmm. because there was going to be some good storylines between Wind Why and, did he leave? You know, I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, he wanted to go on with... He was a wonderful artist. He, was, uh, he was, had become very popular on High Shop Earl. He was young, he was good-looking, he was like... The girls loved him and... Uh, I think maybe his management thought he was going to be a big movie star, and that didn't happen. So I actually worked with Mark uh, on a TV show with James Earl Jones once. And we were the two guest stars, and we worked for two weeks on that show, and we never talked about Chaparral. I didn't mm. have any idea if he knew who I was. I, we played partners, and, and we just got along great. And when the show was over, it was the last thing, and that was a wrap on me. He came up, he shook my hand, he gave me a big hug, and he says, great working with you, Wind. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so he'd uh, been he's been watching. A, he's a good guy. Uh, but the, the, the crew, Henry Darrow was the first one to meet me on, at my dressing room the day that I was getting, trying to get into those clothes and stuff. I heard that about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. <laughs> and Cameron Mitchell's a good guy. Uh, he kind of took and me... And Don Collier, too, and Bobby oh, Hoy, oh, all those guys? That's a whole other story. <laughs> Collier and Bobby sh and, and uh, Roberto Contreras that showed me the art of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know For that. For real, they let me have one drink with them, and then it's a, you can go now. <laughs> go to your room. We got this. So they, they, they and Linda, they all really, it was unbelievable how they accepted me. They guided me. I didn't even know anything about, you know, this is my mark, or don't do this with your, what I got on now. None of that. And they just, little things, you know, Cameron and I talked about, uh, Acting all the time and 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 betting, he loved to he loved to go down to Nogales and and bet on the dogs. And uh, Collier, Collier was somebody I I watched very very closely, and I learned a lot from him too. But it wasn't how to drink that too. <laughs> but I I noticed how Collier, how everybody on the cast, everybody in the crew, all the fans that were this close to us, they they would tape it off and we film. He was never too busy to go over and you know, schmooze with him a little bit. They loved him. Everybody loved him on set. And I, I, I watched that. I wanted, I wanted to, I used to, I said, when I grow up, I'm gonna be just like you. <laughs> so that was a joke. Uh, but he, I'm not very funny. But uh, <laughs> uh, he, he, I, I learned a lot from just watching his behavior about how to be a professional and the, what comes with the obligation of being in a mm -hmm, series. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, you don't really owe the fans anything. They don't owe you anything. But it's nice if you can be kind with them. It's been nice if they can be kind to me or anybody else who's ever been in that position. And I, I, saw, I watched Don. Like I said, he never gave me any advice at all. He, he wouldn't even tell me what to drink. Roberto Contreras would say, here, take this, tequila. So. But no, uh, I, I learned a lot watching, just right. watching Don. And then we became really good friends, mm -hmm. and then we went separate ways. And then Bobby Hoy got us back together about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they, they wanted me to go back to Tucson with them. They were going to have a little get together there mm -hmm. and sign some autographs and pictures. And I had never, I never, never, never heard about autograph signing shows. So how I was that first one for you? 
It was a lot of fun. I didn't make any money, but I didn't know you were supposed to. I didn't even have any, I didn't even have any pictures. Bobby brought me some pictures because Bobby married a, an ex, uh, a friend of mine, not an ex friend, a friend of mine who was in the workshop too after Charlie left. And um, he brought some old pictures and I just gave them away. And he said, you're supposed to charge. <laughs> so that was my first experience, but it was good. We all got back together, me, uh, Bobby, Don Collier, Roberto Contreras, his son Luis, and then they, they passed away, and then Bobby passed away, and then you know Don and I kept doing these autograph signing mm -hmm. shows, and it was fun being with him, because he'd say, now, I'm gonna, you're gonna sit right here, and I'm gonna sit right here, and if they're gonna buy anything from me, they gotta come right past you. And he put that wind picture up right there. <laughs> so, he was always guiding yeah. me all the way till the end. We, I got to talk to him right before he passed. He was a good guy. Sure, he was. Yeah. Everybody liked him. And he had starred in his own series yeah. prior to that, yeah. The Outlaws. Yes. Yeah. And he did, uh, he did a lot of movies. Well, he worked he, with Duke a lot, too. Yes, he did. Yeah. He had got some great stories about the Duke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're all true. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably half of them, at least, anyway. So, the, the wonderful camaraderie on High Chaparral, where everybody gets along. What is it like on Yellowstone? Same thing, just better. Really? Just better. We're all grown-ups now. They were grown-ups. I wasn't, you know. But uh, everybody knows why they're there. Again, it's to serve Taylor, to bring those words to life. And you will never be in a show with better writing. Maybe equal, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, he's amazing, and he's got eight projects going right oh. now. Four of How them. How does he do that? Four of them. He's hyper, isn't he, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the Cowboy Hall of Fame. He's got a lot he, of energy. You know, because you were one of the presenters there, but uh, Taylor showed up at 5.30, went to the cocktail party, accepted his award, and was on a plane at 10.30 that night going back to work. That's it's crazy. It, that's, that's, that's his energy. But his his... His writing skills are exquisite, and that brain never stops throwing out ideas. And it's it's just amazing. He he wrote all of season three Yellowstone, and he wasn't even there. He didn't do it until he was off uh, doing that movie, and there were some issues with the, with the scripts. So, you know, help. He wrote one episode a week while he was directing a movie. Wow. Yeah. And that is some fancy location where you all shoot that, too. Yeah, yeah, Montana's beautiful. Has he bought that? No, but he bought he bought the, the four sixes. I know, I know he did. <laughs> but that was with a group of guys, but he's going to film there. He's going to keep the four sixes mm -hmm. for... People. Probably create a new show just based there. It is a new show based there. <laughs> it's called The Four Sixes. It's just not out yet. I shouldn't be saying it. Think of the merchandising opportunities. Okay. But, uh, yeah, if there is going to be a series called The Four well, Sixes. Well, I'll be watching for that and watching for you, too, Rudy. I appreciate you coming for this. This is fun. And I appreciate you inviting me. Now I have, now I have been interviewed by, by the word. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, <Jerry. laughs> Thank you. I'm the last word, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Rudy Ramos. Thank you. Thank you, Dave.